Let's understand every basic thing about blood typing. There are various antigens that coat the surface of our blood cells. However, there are only three major antigens which are used in ABO blood grouping that is antigen H, antigen A and antigen B. These antigens are encoded by genes and based on the presence or absence of these genes, the blood group of the individual is determined. All of these three antigens are encoded by the ABO genes. The O gene or the H gene does not encode for any enzyme. Thus, in the absence of any enzyme, H antigen is formed. Here, we are only showing the carbohydrate side chain of these antigens. So, the carbohydrate side chain of an H antigen contains galactose, N-acetyl glucosamine, galactose and fucose. When A gene is present in an individual, the enzyme N-acetyl galactosyl aminyl transferase is expressed. This particular enzyme catalyzes the addition of N-acetyl glucosamine on the existing H antigen carbohydrate structure. This leads to the formation of A antigen. When an individual possesses B gene, the enzyme galactosyl transferase is expressed. This particular enzyme catalyzes the addition of galactose on the H antigen carbohydrate structure. This leads to the formation of B antigen. So we can see that all three genes that is A, B, A gene, B gene and H gene encodes for antigens which are slightly different structurally. As we know, the cells of our immune system can differentiate between a self cell and a foreign cell based on the presence of these antigens. When an immune cell comes in contact with an RBC that is expressing self antigens, the cell is very happy. As the cell moves around in the body, it keeps on meeting RBCs expressing self antigen and it is very happy. However, if it meets an RBC which is expressing foreign antigen, the cell becomes very angry. These foreign antigens are like uninvited guests in our body and thus the immune cell needs to react to their presence. Once our body recognizes some cell as foreign, an immune response is triggered immediately to generate specific antibodies against that particular foreign antigen. If the foreign antigen is antigen A, it will trigger the formation of antibody against antigen A. Similarly, antigen B will trigger the formation of antibody against antigen B. This antigen and antibody can react with each other. That is they stick to each other. This antigen antibody binding is very specific. Thus other blood cells having antigen B on their surface will not interact with antibody A. Blood grouping is very simple. A person having blood group A will have antigen A. And as antigen A is a self antigen, this group will not produce antibody for antigen A. For this group, antigen B is a foreign antigen. Thus, they will produce antibodies against antigen B. Similarly, a person having blood group B will have antigen B and they will have antibody against antigen A. A person who is having blood group AB will have both the antigens. Since both the antigens are self antigens, it will not have any antibodies. Blood group O individual do not contain antigen A or antigen B as we know they have antigen H. Thus, they show the presence of antibodies against both antigen A and antigen B as both antigen A and antigen B are foreign for blood group O individuals. Well, we know blood group O individuals have H antigen. Then, 
why is the discussion only about a and b antigens and their particular antibodies well h antigen doesn't really trigger an immune response as you can remember from the structure it is the basic structure for both a and b antigen so individuals having a b or ab blood group do not see h antigen as something foreign thus there is no immune response against the h antigen due to this reason for blood typing we only used antibody against a and b antigens and that is why the entire discussion of abo blood grouping depends upon the presence or absence of either a or b antigens or their antibodies for blood typing we can use two types of sample blood sample or serum sample the blood sample contains all blood cells and coagulating factors thus if we are using the blood sample we will have all the rbcs showing the different antigens present on them however when you allow the blood sample to coagulate the clear liquid which is left behind is known as serum the serum is enriched with antibodies in case of forward typing we use the blood sample thus we have the antigens on the rbcs and to check what is the blood group of the person we will have to add commercially prepared antibodies so we are adding commercial antibodies in forward typing in reverse typing we use the serum of the patient in the serum already antibodies of the patient are present thus over here we will have to add commercially prepared antigens to find out the blood group of the individual so in forward typing you use the blood sample and which contains the antigen so you add the antibodies in reverse typing you use the serum sample which contains the antibodies so you add the commercially prepared antigens for the blood typing now let's understand forward blood typing wherein we use the blood sample of the individual to determine the blood group now once you take blood from a person you add two droplets of blood on a slide on to these two droplets you will add antibody a on one of the droplet and antibody b on another droplet and you will check for agglutination let's assume this is the result that we get after agglutination we know that antibody a will only agglutinate in presence of antigen a here since we see agglutination we can assume that this blood sample contains antigen a so now we know that this person is having antigen a in the blood looking at the second droplet wherein we have added antibody b there is no agglutination we know antibody b can interact with antigen b this means that this blood sample do not contain antigen b so we have antigen a and we do not have antigen b thus we can say that this particular person is having blood group a because they have only antigen a in their blood similarly if there is no agglutination in presence of antibody a this means that antigen a is absent and if there is agglutination in presence of antibody b this means that antigen b is present so this particular blood group can be b wherein the person contains only b antigen and no a antigen is present now in a condition where agglutination is seen for both the antibodies this means that the blood sample contains both antigen a and antigen b since it has both antigen a and b the person is of blood group ab and 
if you do not see agglutination with any of the two antibodies this means that the blood sample do not contains antigen a or antigen b since there are no antigens present in the blood group this means that this particular person is having blood group o in reverse blood typing we use the serum sample and as we know the serum contains the antibodies of the patient thus we add commercially prepared antigens a and antigen b to the two blood droplets now if i do not get any agglutination in presence of antigen a this means that antibodies for antigen a is absent and if i get agglutination in presence of antigen b this means that the serum sample contains antibodies for antigen b now antigen a did not give me any agglutination that means antigen a is a self antigen because since antigen a is a self antigen the body will not produce antibodies against a and antigen b is a foreign antigen because of which there are antibodies against antigen b that is why since the person is having a antigen as self and b antigen as foreign the person has a blood group a similarly if i see agglutination in presence of antigen a this means that the serum sample contains antibodies for antigen a and if i do not see any agglutination in presence of antigen b this means that there are no antibodies for antigen b which means that antigen b is a self antigen and the serum the blood sample actually contains antigen b and there is no antigen a thus the person has a blood group b if there is no agglutination in presence of both the antigens this means that both antigens are self antigens and since both the antigens are self antigens the person has a blood group of ab as they do not have any antibodies they have both the antigens only and if we see agglutination of the serum sample happening for both antigen a and antigen b this means that this serum sample contains antibodies against both antigen a and for antigen b there is only one blood group type which contains antibodies against both antigen a and antigen b since blood group o individuals do not have any of the two antigens both antigen a and antigen b are foreign and it shows agglutination with both the antigens to summarize it forward typing we use blood sample which have the antigens of the patient and we add commercially prepared antibodies to the blood sample and if there is agglutination with a it means that a is present so you can remember if a is getting agglutination there is a present in case of reverse typing we use the serum sample that contains the antibodies and we add the commercially prepared antigens over here agglutination with a does not mean that a is present here there are commercially prepared antibodies here they are commercially prepared antigens but over here if there is agglutination with these antibodies this means that a antigen is present but here if there is agglutination it means that it is absent let us consider two parents with genotype ao and bo if we draw a punnett square to find the probable genotype of the offsprings for these two parents we will end up with ab ao bo and oo genotypes according to mendelian inheritance one allele is always dominant over the other allele and the other allele is recessive 
the dominant allele masks the expression of the recessive allele thus in case of the ab genotype any one of the blood antigen must be expressed and the other must be masked that is the person can either have a blood group a or a blood group b if we follow the mendelian inheritance however in case of blood group ab we know neither of the antigen is masked thus the offsprings show the presence of both antigens a and antigen b in the blood since both the antigens are dominant and both the antigens are getting expressed this type is known as codominance because both the antigens are equally acting dominant and they are both getting expressed rh factor is the most important blood group system after the abo blood group system with respect to blood transfusion let us consider two parents who are heterozygous for the rh factor that is they have one positive and one negative allele for the rh factor if we draw a punnett square to find out the possible genotype of these offsprings resulting from these heterozygous parents we will end up with possible genotypes as plus 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 minus plus minus and minus minus from these we get three different genotypes that is plus plus genotype plus minus genotype and the third genotype is minus minus however we only get two phenotypes that is rh positive phenotype and rh negative phenotype as the rh positive acts as a dominant allele which masks the recessive rh allele rh minus allele rh factor is known to be inherited in the mendelian fashion because this is the dominant allele which is masking the recessive allele in a blood sample if you add commercially prepared antibody against the rh factor that is antigen d and you end up getting agglutination this means that antigen d or the rh factor is present in the blood sample which means that the person is rh positive however if there is no agglutination in the blood sample this means that antigen d or the rh factor is absent thus the person is known to be rh negative now considering both abo and rh blood typing we have different blood groups as a plus b plus ab plus o plus a minus b minus ab minus and o minus if this video was helpful then please like this video share it with your friends subscribe to my channel and don't forget to leave us your valuable comments thank you